Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel where we learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm really happy to teach you and give you tips to one of my favorite board games, Blood Rage, a game where Vikings compete to die in glory as Ragnarok slowly consumes the world. I love the theme in this game. I think the interaction between the players is a lot of fun and also works really well. Also, there's a certain excitement that comes every time a new age starts. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. In Blood Rage, you play a clan of Viking warriors. Everyone's gonna die, so you might as well go down in a blaze of glory. Each player must gain as much glory as possible through battle, pillages, fulfilling quests for the gods, or dying valiantly to reach Valhalla. The game progresses through three ages as it comes to its fiery end. The player with the most glory at the end is the winner. The first thing you do is select your clan. They all start with the same abilities, only their color and minis are different. You can choose between the bears, the serpents, the ravens, the wolves, and also the rams if you have the fifth player expansion. At the beginning, each clan comes with a leader, the one with the standard, one ship, and eight warriors. These come in two sets of minis, but they all have the same abilities. Attach the plastic base of your clan's color to them. Keep the additional four bases near you. Here's for your leader upgrades and here to upgrade your warriors and this one here for your ship. These three here are for your overall clan upgrades and this one here if you want to add monsters. In the middle, place one of your clan tokens on the leftmost space of each track. This one here is for your rage. Rage is the unit that allows you to take actions. These are the axes. They show how much glory you get after winning each battle. And the horns here, you can place as many minis on the board as you have horns. Place your last clan token on the sixth spot of the rage track, since your starting rage is six. These stats will increase through the game. Now, let's put the main board in the middle of the table and let's have a look at it in more detail. The world of Midgard is made of three regions, the blue Jotunheim, the yellow Mannheim, and the white Alfheim. They are made of provinces and surround the central province of Yggdrasil. The provinces have a certain number of villages. Each village can hold only one mini. There's no limit to the number of units that can occupy Yggdrasil. There's also four fjords where you can place as many ships as you want. Each fjord supports the two provinces they connect to and are affected by what affects these two provinces. Place the pillage token with the green border on Yggdrasil. Shuffle the remaining pillage tokens and place one on each province face up. Place the nine monster minis next to the board. Now place the age track and the Valhalla sheets near the board. Separate the gods' gift cards in three ages. Also take out the four plus cards in a three player game and the three plus and four plus cards for a two player game. Shuffle each deck and place each of them at the beginning of each age. Place the saga token on top of the first age deck. Now, take all the Ragnarok tokens and place one on each of the Ragnarok spots on the age track. Text side face up. Place the Doom token on the province of the first age Ragnarok. That province will be the next to be destroyed at the end of the first age. Depending on the number of players, randomly take the remaining Ragnarok tokens and place them on the main board, destroyed side face up. In a four player game, destroy one province two for a three-player game, and three for a two-player game. Return the remaining Ragnarok tokens to the box. Give the first player token to the player who was born furthest to the north. That marker will turn clockwise at the end of each age. Place your clan's glory marker on zero and you are ready to play. The gods are generous in these twilight hours and bestow gifts upon their clans. The game starts with the distribution of these gifts to all players. Take the deck of cards corresponding to the age. You shuffle and distribute eight cards face down to each player. Then you discard the leftover. It's either two or four cards. Each player inspects the cards they were dealt. The cards come in three categories, green quests, black upgrades, and red for battles. 
The green cards are divine quests you can fulfill to gain glory and improve your clan stats. They usually relate to having superior strength in a province at the end of the age. The black cards are upgrade cards for your troops, the clan or monsters. Now the red cards are battle cards which you can play usually one at a time during battles to increase your strength. You select one and then place it face down on the clan sheet. Once the players have selected their card, they pass the rest of their cards to the player on their left. Once the players have selected six cards that way, they will return the last two cards in their hand to the box. Now the first player will move the Saga token one step and is ready to take the first action at the action stage. Players play one action at a time in clockwise order. They can play one of five possible actions. All the actions are explained at the bottom of the clan sheet. The first action is to invade. This is when you bring troops onto the board. When you invade, you pay the troop strength in rage, except for your leader who invades for free. Invading troops can be placed on any empty village or fjords or outer provinces that are not destroyed. Some units can be placed directly into Yggdrasil, but most cannot as there's no village. To get to Yggdrasil, they need to use another action, which is to march. To march costs one rage and you can move all your units from one province to another. They don't have to be adjacent provinces. You do not have to move all the units present in the first province, but you cannot split them across two new provinces either. You also cannot group units from two different provinces into one. Finally, remember that you can never move your ships. They always stay in the fjord where they first invaded. A really important aspect of Blood Rage is how you use your cards to upgrade your warriors, your leaders, and bolster these forces with monsters. In Blood Rage, you can upgrade everything in your clan sheet. You can upgrade your leader, your clan, your ship, your warriors, and you can add monsters in play as well to your clan. So to upgrade, you're going to play the corresponding black card and pay the strength in rage. So in this case, it's zero, so you don't go down rage. You can just simply play it. This one, for example, you can, you'll pay two, so you'll go down rage, which I did, two. When you upgrade a warrior, you still pay the strength in rage. In this case, it's one. Now, you can also automatically send one of your troops in play. Now, in this case here, for this card, it means that my warriors, my pair of war a pair of warriors is going to be worth three, not two. However, because I have this card here, it says that I pay one less rage to put any upgrade in play. So this one's going to cost me zero. Now, for the monsters, you do the same. You would pay two rage, but again, I have this card that gives me one less rage. So I would put it in play. I would go down one and it would go straight on the board. Note that there is only one upgrade slot for troops, three for your clan and two for monsters. If all the slots are full already and you play a new upgrade card, you need to replace one of those in play. Finally, the clan upgrades in play are cumulative and add to one another. Another action is to play a quest. Simply take one quest from your hand and place it face down on the clan icon of your clan sheet. It doesn't cost any rage and you can commit as many quests as you want each age. And there's no penalty if you don't fulfill a quest. Another action you can take is to pillage to increase your clan's power or for glory. If you have troops in a province, you can decide to pillage the province. If you're alone and nobody wants to fight you, you instantly pillage the province. Flip the pillage token, and in this case, instead of upgrading a clan stat, you collect five glory points. Note that if you gain rage, you gain it here, not for the rage you can use in this turn. You do not collect additional glory as there was no fighting involved. Now, if there's already another player in the province, or an empty village in the province and other players in neighboring provinces or fjords, you will have to call for battle to see if anyone else wants to join the fight. Starting from the player on the left of the active player and going clockwise, each player must announce if they want to commit one unit at a time to the fight. These can come from any adjacent province. You will need to defeat them before you can claim the loot. 
even the active player can commit more troops, and a player who has passed can commit more troops later on if not all players have passed in that turn. Remember that there's no limit to the number of units you can place into Yggdrasil if you're fighting there, so it can go on for a while. Once no player wishes to join in, or all the villages are occupied, the battle begins. The great thing in this game is that you don't need to throw dice to crack some skulls. Instead, you're going to use your minis, you're going to use your cards, and you're going to use the upgrades in your clan sheet. So each player involved in the battle adds up their strength of their units. So the raven, for example, here the leader is worth three and their warrior is upgraded, so it's worth two. The serpent, the leader is worth three and the warrior is worth one. And the wolves has his leader and it's worth three. Each player plays one card face down. That's usually a battle card which adds strength and can provide additional effects. All the cards are revealed at the same time. Remember that all players have to play one card and that the winner will discard all the cards played. Sometimes you can play another type of card as a bluff or because you have a special upgrade. The highest total strength wins and all the losers send their minis to Valhalla. If the Raven actually had played this card instead of the plus five, they would have tied and they would have all gone to Valhalla. In this case, the good thing about tying is that they are all losers, so they're all going to keep their cards. This is wonderfully simple, but very strategic and tense as you take calculated risks that can bring you great rewards and also sometimes devastating losses. All players keep taking one action at a time until all players have passed or they've run out of rage. Also, if all the provinces have been pillaged, the phase ends immediately. Remember that if you have passed, you can still join battles, but you cannot initiate battles or take free actions like committing quests. Now you're going to move the Saga token one step, and as it says here, you're going to discard down to one card. So, and you keep it near the clan sheet. Then you move the Saga token once more to score the quests. So for each quest you have committed and completed, you score the amount of glory points indicated on each card, and you raise one of your clan stats for each quest you have completed. Most quests involve having more strength in a province. If you tie with another player, nobody scores. Then discard all the quest cards you committed this age, whether you fulfilled them or not. Then we move the Saga token once more, and we advance Ragnarok. Take the Ragnarok token on the current age, and place its destroyed side face up on its corresponding province. All the minis in that province are sent to Valhalla. For each, score the glory points marked on the age track sheet. Now, some upgrades also let you gain more points this way. That province is now destroyed and inaccessible and forever out of the game. Move the Doom token to the next Doomed province. Then we move the Saga token once more to release the troops from Valhalla. Return all minis to their owners. Remember that some upgrades also let you gain more points this way. Flip all the pillage tokens back face up. Pass the first player token to the player on the left. Move the Sega token to the next age, and that's the end of the first age. The second and third age will proceed exactly the same. It's just more exciting because the cards are more powerful, the clans have more rage and more actions, and there are more minis on the board. When you reach the release Valhalla at the end of the third age, then Ragnarok consumes the world and the game is over. Add the points scored by your clan stats to your glory score. So plus 10 per stat where you've reached the fourth or fifth step and plus 20 points for each stat you've upgraded to the maximum. The player with the most glory is the winner. In case of a tie, I think you need to fight again. My tips to win at Blood Rage are, when you are drafting the cards, try to focus in one or two of the gods. It's also important to build a hand that has a good balance of the green, the black, and the red cards. A lot of the time you're going to pick a card that is perfect for your deck. Now, sometimes you will want to take a card so that another player doesn't get it. It's a rookie mistake to start spending a lot of rage, especially on some upgrades that are really expensive. Try to use the ones that are not very expensive and help the entire clan. After a couple of games, have a look at the cards and see how they combine and how they build on each other, because it's quite interesting when you take some from first stage to second to third and you basically make them a lot more powerful.
Do not underestimate Yggdrasil because Yggdrasil will upgrade all your three clan stats and that is really powerful. So that's how you play Blood Rage. It's a ton of fun. It is an incredible combination between good strategic thinking and fast paced good time. Now, and if you're like me and you like your minis painted, it's absolutely gorgeous. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.